Okay, here we go. This is the Snow and Neely two and a quarter pound boys axe. I'm going to tell you a few things about it before I send it back to Amazon. And I'm also taking two weeks off, like a two week hiatus from YouTube. And I'll tell you why after I finish this, which I'm going to try to keep pretty short. It's an actual 28 inches long, which is cool. The head is two and a quarter pounds. The head looks pretty nice. It's well finished. Um, they say it's ground ready to use out of the box, which it definitely is not. Um, and that's to be expected, but I don't think they should use that as a selling point if it's not true. The sheath is uh, kind of a cheap chrome tanned leather, but it is stiff. The rivets are exposed to the blade. It's okay overall. It's not great, I guess, but it's not horrible either. If you, you know, bend it like this, the sharp corner here is exposed, which is a little dangerous. I think that could be improved by just changing the design a little bit. But there's definitely been some time spent finishing this head. So um, part of the price, it's a $70 axe on Amazon, which is probably the cheap side. Uh, a lot of that money is certainly for head, head work, like finishing the head. The handle is not that great. It, it actually beat out the Husqvarna axe, which I complained bitterly about the thickness of this. It's actually thicker in every dimension than this. So the head is one inch thick here. The shoulder is over one and an eighth here, and the handle down here is one sixteenth. It's just really, really stiff. I mean, there's just so little give to a handle like this, and I'm not a big fan of that. I don't like that, and that's points down for me. You could fix it, but they also mounted it like way off to one side, so I don't know how that happens. I mean, I don't know the process they go through to, to mill this and mount those but somehow it ended up like this side of the handle is almost flush with the head and this side sticks out almost an eighth of an inch that's a deal killer too it says it's select great hickory i would say not um, i mean it's not horrible but it definitely has some funny grain and some kind of like twist to it especially down here but if you look down the handle, there, there is already a little bit of warp to the handle. That's probably gonna get worse over time. Yeah, there's definitely a little warp going on there. So between all of those things, for a $70 ax, I just don't see it. The main competition for this ax is the Council Tool Boys ax. This, I think I paid 37 ship, 37 or 38 ship to my door on Amazon much less time spent on the head like finishing the head and making it look nice but the handle really was like a nice a grade handle i would say um, very nice handle and it also came thin enough to use out of the box you know at least to my way of thinking i just don't think the problem of handle breakage is solved by just making handles thicker if anything if you think about it it might actually put extra stress on the eye area right here because if in a flexible handle like if it was stressed the whole handle flexes but if one part is really thin and the rest of it's really thick and doesn't flex then when energy is applied to it where is the handle going to try to bend or where is it going to bend it's going to bend at the thinnest point so i mean that's all kind of theoretical unless you could really put it to some kind of um, hardcore test but I think it's true, and I think that at some point the thickness could be seen as um, a detriment that actually makes the thinnest part, the weakest part of the handle, which is the most vulnerable, and where they break a lot is up in here, um, more vulnerable. Just a thought. I was hoping that you know there would be another good American axe manufacturer, but for almost twice the price and a much less good handle, it needs more work, uh, you know, the finish on the head. I don't know. I mean, to me, it's like th you should think about this as a $70 axe head. And it's hard for me to believe that it's worth that. And you can still, even though prices are freaking insane on eBay now, you can still get probably a whole boy's axe with a two and a quarter, two and a half pound head and, a, and an older handle, or just a head for less than that. So I probably think that's still a better option. Um, I'm just trying to like, I don't really want this stuff and I actually can't afford this so I'm really glad I'm sending it back. But um, I just wanted to check what, what's on the market to see like if I might be able to recommend stuff to people. And I was just hoping 
there would be another good American option. Apparently these guys were sold, outsourced production overseas somewhere, um, were bought again by someone else, and then production was brought back to the US. Whatever, it's going back, back to Amazon. Now just real quick, um, I just wanna show you a handle, like if you look in old books, on axes, you'll see pictures, you know, illustrations that look more like this kind of a proportion. I mean, this is like a three and a half pound head, and I slimmed this down some. I'm not saying that the handle came like this, but it wasn't that far off from this. And this is more close to what I think people used to use in the old days, and it's what feels more comfortable to me. Like if I stick this head in a stump or something, I can just push this handle around and watch it flex, you know, because it has a lot of bend to it. So anyway, uh, yeah, the other night, a couple nights, two nights ago, I woke up um, to get up for something and there was water dripping out of my ceiling. It has been raining. Can you hear the creak? Of course you can. You could probably hear it more than you can hear me. Anyway, my ceiling was leaking and so I spent like a day, a half a day, like jacking up things and trying to fix the roof and everything. And it turned out there was like over a quart of water collected in my ceiling that I drained out like it was still dripping this morning. I can't drive to town now. Uh, I usually have a 10 mile drive to town. Now to go to that town, it's like over 60 miles probably uh, because the road completely washed out. It's gonna be washed out for a while, I think. And then our ranch road right here is threatening to wash out. Like you can barely get out right now and we'll see how that goes. But it just made me realize running around dealing with that and I've just been stressing out about um, all kinds of stuff that are, you know, my personal life that if I need to get together. Like I need some time off to just focus on getting my life together, getting organized, cleaning up, moving some stuff around, making my life a little bit more efficient, like working on some projects that I don't get to. I need to work on chopping my wood for the Court of a Challenge even. Um, it just doesn't you know, always happen. I'm busy making content and I'm busy thinking about content all the time. And so I finished one video and like I have maybe a day where I can just kind of shut my brain off and think about something else. And then pretty quick though, I'm back to thinking about, okay, I need to pull off. That. So I have to take a couple weeks off. And during that time, I may actually end up shooting some stuff, but it's a lot different to just shoot a few things when it's convenient or when something's happening than to like then go take that and edit it, which takes a long time and get it published and then answer comments and all that stuff. And hopefully I will have a healthy and productive uh, couple of weeks. I'm actually pretty, feel pretty motivated and semi excited about it. So that's a good sign. And I think I'll be able to get some stuff together and feel like my life isn't falling apart around me while I'm doing YouTube. <laughs> so um, thanks for watching. And I hate to break the momentum at this point, but it just, Got, something's got to give, so it's going to be that right now. Okay, cheers.